Since the release of Qinyang in patch 1.6, she has solidified herself as the strongest DPS in Reverse 1999. Back then, I was concerned the power creep nature of the game will accelerate, but today, I'm here to present to you why I'm convinced this is the case. Now, before I go on to tell you why I feel this way, it is important to understand what I personally define as power creep. In my opinion, power creep occurs when there is no meaningful reason to run one unit over another, making the weaker units effectively obsolete. With that out of the way, let's go down memory lane to take a look at how power creep in R99 has become a menace, just like I am for effectively hating on the original launch units. So back when the game first launched in 1.0, these are the 6 star units we were working with. Centurion, Eternity, Druvis, Regulus, Sotheby, Voyager, New Babel, Lilia, Medicine Pocket, Ananli, and a9. Among the cast, although there are clear winners such as Centurion, Anandi and Druvis, the rest of the units aren't that far back from the top. Except for Miss New Babel, she's been sucking since the start, Blue Pop just buff her, come on. Now that aside, even within the beginner summon pool, any of the three units, Lilia, Regulus or Eternity would be a good pickup back then. Now fast forward 5 patches to 1.5, which we are soon getting for global, let's take a look now at how things have changed. On first look, Power Creep has definitely started quietly making its way into the game with a few launch units now made obsolete. Eternity has now been Power Creep not once, but twice. With the release of Jessica in 1.2 who basically became the queen of AoE damage, and more directly with the introduction of Kalabwana who not only does more AoE and single target damage, possesses sustained capabilities just like Eternity and even sharing the mineral reflectors, this has made her a prime example of power creep. Similarly, Sotheby and Medicine Pocket have been somewhat made obsolete with the entrance of Two Fairy in patch 1.2. Tooth Fairy entered the game as the best healer bar none, being able to passively heal and apply crit debuffs while also being able to cleanse with her ultimate. If someone had Tooth Fairy, there was little to no reason to run any other healer, making her another great example of power creep. Other than that though, honestly it wasn't that bad. Melania and Spatodia at this time were basically single target counterparts to Centurion. 37 brought about Genesis damage but she wasn't extremely strong to the point that she power crapped the star trio Lilia, Regulus and Voyager. Now as for 6, though he's outright OP as a passive buffer and an active cleanser with great DPS, I wouldn't say he made Ananli obsolete as she could still function with him in the same exact team. However, things would take a drastic turn with the release of 1.6. The release of the first true New Year limited character Chunyang destroyed any semblance of balance in the game. Unlike Jessica that was recently crowned Queen of AoE DPS in patch 1.2, Chinyang became the best single target and AoE DPS overnight. With her fallout attacks from her newly introduced channel mechanic, she made her way into every single team, and rarely will you find enemies that outright counter her. A national team was then bought, featuring Chinyang, 37, 2 Fairy, and 6, effectively clearing all content with ease. At this time, people acknowledge her strength but justified it with the fact that she's our first limited character. After all, it's not like they would continue to release banger after banger falling dead, right? Right? Yeah, no, they actually did. Alongside Chi Niang's release in 1.6, Birdman Gertian was introduced and he basically screams reality DPS support, and massive one at that. He also brought about his passive AAK bada bing bada boom which wasn't that strong until 1.7 came around and Isot was released. Now Isot basically brought about massive quick defense and reality defense reduction making her the perfect partner in crime with Gertian in reality DPS teams and she power crept the shit out of every single sub DPS as her own damage often rivaled that of her main DPS and the burn stack she provides made Spectodia rise from being shoulder to shoulder with Melania and Centurion to her being the one punch girl she is, hitting ungodly damage they could only wish to achieve in raids. Furthermore, just when the CN folks thought Blue Pock would give them a breather, Marcus's release into the game changed things once again. This plant reflectors fluffy girl who people initially thought to be just as strong as Jessica turned out to be miles ahead of her, both in AoE and single damage departments with her unlimited upgrading cards tech, and she's able to spam ultimates as much as 3 ultimates in 4 rounds. Despite that, a lot of people were still in Jessica's camp because Marcus is a mental damage dealer and there wasn't any good mental damage supports until 
1.8 where they announced Villa and boy oh boy not only is she a mental support but also a passive healer with crit support that on first glance looks to dethrone two fairy or at a minimum match her strength. I think at this point it is clear since patch 1.6 the power levels of the new releases in R99 have just been accelerating seemingly to no end but you might ask is that a problem? Now we all know that the game's primary aim is to generate revenue and power creep seems to be the easiest path to success. After all, this incentivizes players to actually spend and obtain this shiny new toys. However, my concern though is that if done wrongly at light speed pace, which is what we are seeing, it will not only be ineffective but be counterproductive. Players seeing how new characters are constantly getting stronger and stronger might wait and save their currency awaiting this power creep train to stop, especially for global players that can look ahead 3 patches and see what CN is actually getting, so this is going to be more of a problem. Furthermore, my secondary concern is that the power levels of these new characters makes older units, especially the launch units, pale so much in comparison, not to mention newer releases have much more interesting kits, which makes it much worse in my opinion, especially since some of these older units oftentimes have the best skins that are coming to them, so it might just be a waste to introduce new skins when they are not usable at all. Regardless, I do know that not everyone share my sentiment, so I'm interested in hearing what you guys think in the comment section below. Also, maybe after watching this, you're interested in what the CN players actually think, then you definitely want to check out this video over here. I'll see you guys over there. This is Cocky Gachas, signing off.